Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Thursday AMA. Um, this one's going to be a bit of a shorter one, probably about an hour or so. Um, I just have a few people that are coming over to my house to make some repairs, so I have to be around for that when they come. And I'm not going to dox to them either, so <laughs> we're going to have to end this before they they come through. Uh, on another note, uh, Roof, I did order the microphone that you recommended. Um, it just came. I am actually using it right now, so let me know how I sound, if I sound any better. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that, man. I mean, uh, you sound better, man. It's clean. Yeah, it's clean. I, I liked it. Um, I, I This is my first time using it, but this is perfect because I can use it on all of my headphones. So thank you for that, man. I appreciate yeah, man. you sending yeah. me the link for that. Yeah, so hopefully right. the audio on our AMAs will be better moving forward. Um, other than that, let me give you guys a little idea of what we're working on this week as far as the team goes. Um, so we started talking about what we want to do for the burn one year anniversary. So we, we're getting a plan in motion for that. We're going to do something pretty fun, something pretty creative, something that uh, honestly we haven't done before. So, you know, it's not just going to be like your, your average, uh, anniversary thing, like something, something cheap that we put together. It's going to be something pretty cool and something pretty fun. So, um, once we have all of the idea for that finalized in the next, few days hopefully we'll we'll share it with you guys but we are going to be doing a one-year anniversary event for burn um and hopefully it can actually be something that'll help the burn project grow and you know uh, bring new holders on board that's the whole idea behind it too is kind of to make a, a little bit of a, a marketing spectacle out of it and I, th I think we're pretty good at doing that so so we'll be able to pull off something fun here uh other than that the biggest priority um is getting the armory and staking season three out and going so we're working very closely with our um with our uh web developers and our solidity developers to make sure everything on that end is ready to go the armory is looking pretty much like close to being done just finishing touches at this point and that's going to change the entire game as to how people are interacting with with our ecosystem so that's going to come out pretty pretty soon. Um, and then staking season three, like I said uh, last week, within the next 10 to 20 days, we'll have a full on um, full on announcement on that. So so that's still that's still on track to happen, and that's still something that we want to pretty much um, do by let's say here. Let me look at the calendar here. What is today? The sixth. Let's say by like the seventeenth, we wanna we wanna be able to have an announcement on that. So, so I know that's what everybody is looking forward to. Um, it is a time right now where we are catching our breath, which is uh, very much needed. Uh, obviously, it was very stressful, and um, a lot of hard work was put into getting the the crates out and get, you know, managing all of the new people that were coming into discord and all of the marketing and all of the other drama and stuff that happened in between. Obviously, you know, there's always bumps in the road, but everything is looking solid on our end guys. Um, like I say, you know, Shiba Doji will do what Shiba Doji is going to do and we're going to do what we're going to do. And what I mean by that is, <clears throat> And Peter always says this too. He says it's programmed, right? And what does he mean by that? He means that the token is, is programmed to do what the token is programmed to do. There's nothing that I can come up and say or do that's going to catapult it into the next uh, all-time high, right? It's out of my control. But what is in my control is making sure that we can continue to bring development on, stay on top of this, uh, always be here to support people, always be here to educate people, always be here to interact with people. And that's what we're good at, right? So the token will do what the token's going to do. The ecosystem will do what the ecosystem's going to do. I think we're in a good place as far as, um, as far as sentiment goes, right? I'm, I'm feeling more bullish than ever. Uh, I have a feeling, and this is my personal feeling and my personal opinion, don't take it with financial advice, but I have a feeling that we're going to see a a bull market very very soon, like very very soon for the crypto um, for the crypto markets, right? So take that with a grain of salt. I just have that gut feeling. 
I have no backing to it, no proof to it, no nothing like that. But I do know one thing. When I get this gut feeling, I'm usually right. And I I very rarely get this gut feeling, right? But when I get it, I know that something's up. So something interesting is brewing in the background, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know exactly what it is, but we do know that Leo likes it. So <laughs> yeah, take it with a grain of salt. But as far as the armory goes, let's talk about that for a minute. Um, the armory is going to be something that I think is going to be very special to people, especially people who uh, own a Shiba Doge NFT and they are pretty much, let's say, tapped out. Like they don't want to invest any more ETH, any more cash into into buying any new tokens or buying any new uh, NFTs moving forward. Let's say they're tapped out. The Armory will give users a chance to continue to get new NFTs and new features and new things added to their wallet without even having to spend any ETH, without having to spend any uh, um, any money, right? So that's what I think is going to be a game changer for our project because it creates a funnel of people who are continuous, continuously getting new stuff just by already holding the stuff that you own, right? And that's very important because over the months, it, a lot of it adds up. And over the months, if we as an NFT project take off, all of those NFTs that people have been claiming are going to be worth uh, something to, to other people from the outside when they're getting in, right? So, you know, it all ties in hand in hand. What do I personally think it's going to take for the NFT project to, to really, really pop off and really, really become super successful? I'll tell you what I personally think it's going to take. I personally think what it's going to take is the token project popping off because the ecosystem is embedded. It's, it's pretty much integrated with each other, right? If, if the token does well, and let's say the token hits a billion dollars in market cap, the NFTs are going to benefit from that tremendously because of the, the rewards from the war zone, right? And if people are making a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, passive, like, let's say, token gain, right, just from, just from their NFTs in the war zone, those, no one's going to want to get rid of their, their NFTs for you know, less than one ETH or two ETH or whatever. And that's what I think. That's what my personal opinion is. So what is our next focus moving forward? Our next focus moving forward has to be, it, I think what it has to be is to focus on continuing to grow the community and continuing to bring on strong uh uh, people into the token project that can help the token project continuously grow because at the same time as the token project grows, the NFT project grows with it, right? It's, it, it's programmed. So how are we going to do that? Honestly, the way that we're going to do it is continuing to do what we're already doing, uh, continuing to show up here week after week, continuing to build, continuing to interact with the community, continuing to just be a very a safe and fun place to be for people in Web3. We don't want to be like projects like Shinja or projects that just like leave their users hanging. That's not us. That's not what we're going to do. Um, so I, I think leadership is very important in a uh, in in finding success in anything, not just this field, but anything. You need a strong leadership, and I think. I think we're doing a good job in doing that. So obviously I don't have any uh, crazy new news today other than what I talked about, but it, like I said, this is, this is a moment of us being able to catch our breath. This is a moment of us actually being able to enjoy the stuff that we built and introduced uh, over the past like couple of weeks. Uh, obviously we still have a couple of things that are still coming out, but I think once we have the armory and once we have the war zone release, um, then, then we're really going to be in a nice place where I can actually step back for a second and think of what's the next big plan, right? Because right now the main thing that I'm thinking of is getting the rest of this development out and making sure that everything is seamless and smooth on that end. 
And then we get back to doing what, what we're best at, and that's being visionaries and being able to uh, assign new tasks to the rest of our team. Even though our team is working on like two or three different things in the background that, that we've assigned over the past few months that are, in my opinion, some really, really big things that we want to test out and kind of see if we can build. Um, and if we can build those, those are complete game changers in, in, in our book. But, you know, th 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 those things that we're working on are long, long-term things, and they, they are going to take a lot of effort to actually get done. So in the meantime, while we're working on, you know, crazy things in the background, we got to worry about how to uh, come up with the next big thing when the bull market comes around. So I am super excited for that time because that's what I'm best at. Personally, that's what I'm best at is actually coming up with those plans and coming up with those ideas as to what to do next to, to kind of uh, catapult us into another stage, into another stage of growth. So I think um, I think after we get season three of staking out, I'll be able to catch my breath and be able to, to uh, calmly think about the next course of action and I'm, I'm super excited about that because that's that's where I let my creativity um, take over, and that's where I that's where I shine most personally. So we we have been building our team still continuously, he, even though um, even though there is pretty much all of the stuff that we were working on over the past six months is now concluded. Now now is like when things really get started, right? Because that development and all that that's just to create the product. Now it's all about sustaining the product. It's all about making sure the product stays uh, consistent and is actually something that can uh, have a successful future. So the armory is going to be one of my favorite parts of our ecosystem, even though not everyone's going to have a chance to be able to interact with it unless you have a Shiba Doji NFT. Um, we are going to introduce new ways for people to interact with the armory in the future as well. Even if you don't have a Shiba Doji NFT, or maybe you just have Doji armies or Shiba armies, we're thinking of ways how, how to integrate um, you know, those people to interact with it. Uh, uh, obviously, Alex talked about some cross-chain functionality. That's something we're experimenting with and trying to come up with some um, ideas on how that can be a, a very beneficial thing to us moving forward. I had some people in my DMs, uh, some really OG community members reach out to me over the past few days, and and they were actually uh, giving me some really uh, nice insight as to something uh, that had to do with... Uh, that had to do with sushi swap and how sushi swap actually has a new feature that allows cross chain functionality just by having a liquidity pool there. So I'm personally doing some research there and seeing if it's worth actually opening up a liquidity pool on sushi swap to see if uh, that could give us exposure to different chains. I don't know exactly how it works just yet. I still have to do, do more research, but that was something that was super, super interesting to me. Um, if the homie that uh, mentioned that to me is in here, shout out to you because that that was pretty good news. I, I honestly I knew about Sushi Swap, but I never really did any research into them, so I don't know much about what they do. And I I, I do know that they're big, and I do know that they're they're competitor to Uniswap, but but that's all I know. Um, but yeah, guys, right now, next course of action is to make sure that we stay bullish. Next course of action is to make sure that we can continue and sustain this growth because we are growing every single day. Let me pull up our, let me pull up our holder list here in like two seconds. Shiba Doggy. 28,962, ladies and gentlemen, we're... We're very close to hitting that 29,000. And then after that, 30K, let's go. And our fully diluted market cap is still glitched out on Etherscan, it seems like. We're sitting at a $33 trillion market cap, which is <laughs> pretty funny to look at. So, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's that. They'll fix that pretty soon. Uh, but if you click into Meme Token, here on Etherscan, let me see. Okay, yeah, it's glitched out. It doesn't show it. At one point, we were we were shown as the number one absolute number one meme token on Etherscan, which was which was pretty cool. I should have took a screenshot of that, but I guess since the glitch happened, they either moved us down the list or just removed us. So we'll be back on there. But other than that, guys, I don't have anything else I need to announce. Let's open the floor. Let's talk. Let's have some questions. If people just want to talk, too, that's fine, too. We can we can do whatever you guys want today.
Oh, I can hear some crickets. Yep. I can't. Yep. Nothing, man. Looks like it's going to be me and you. It looks like it's just going to be me and you, um, Leo. Yeah, that's fine, bro. I mean, I don't always expect people to come yeah. up and talk, man. You know, a lot of people are listening from work. A lot of people are listening just on their headphones, probably kicking back with their families. They're just, yeah. you know, there are some people who might just not even have any questions because it's, like, wait, I mean, we're, we're, we try to be as transparent as possible. And obviously, I know everyone's number one question is when war zone, when armory. So I, I always want to make sure I address the things that I already know are the elephant in the room. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not always surprised that people don't have questions. When spreadsheet. <laughs> Yeah, for for Bur um, I'm saying burn for season three, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that'll happen when I do the announcements and all that. So uh, I'm hoping to do yeah, that either by the seventeenth, which is a Monday AMA. If I don't do it by the seventeenth, I'll try to do it by the twentieth, which is the Thursday AMA of uh, not next week, but the week after. So so we'll have all that out to you guys. I was gonna say, um, there's a project out there that's released a credit card like a card um where you can go and spend your crypto um what what do you think of something like that where they don't even like if you used to register for that they just take an email so you don't have to give personal information either and it spends yeah, your i've seen I've, yeah i've seen that it's nothing new saitama did it too saitama actually was probably one of the first people to do it um yeah. i don't know exactly how it works like i don't know if it it, it, I know for sure it doesn't work by the token, the native token. Um, it might work with just USDT or USDC, but I got to look into it. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, I, I think it's cool, but I think it's just a, just a gimmick, bro. I mean, I have, mm -hmm. I have my personal credit cards that I like to use that give me points. Right. And I rather n not have, like, you're going to have to tie in your name with the debit card, no matter what, eventually. Right. So um, I don't know how. Apparently if you spend, if you're spending 2000 a day, $2,000 a day, you don't have to, it's just an email. But if you're spending uh, over that, then you have to give your information. So I'm going to send you a video. I'm going to clip out a video of them talking about it and I'll send it to you so you can uh, see what they're saying. Yeah, let me check it out. But, let me check it out. Sounds sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, there's a way around it. And apparently, whichever country you go to, it converts into that currency as well. Yeah, yeah, that's what all visas and MasterCards do. Yeah, so I don't know how... Um, how it's set up but well, i think they supply the the pool or so, something like that so i'm gonna yeah, I'll, send I'll, it over I'll, I'll i'll have our devs look into it i mean they, they'll check it out and tell me exactly how, how it works from yeah. the back end and the front end so yeah i mean i don't know if that's something we'll be interested in doing to be completely honest with you bro just right. just because of i mean I don't know. I mean, we'd have to even look into it and look at look at the legal side of things and see what kind of yeah, exactly. repercussions that has. But, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll provide you the, the information. I mean, you guys just check it out, make sure everything's legit. It's not going to cause any issues, obviously. But if, if you do, you do. If not, then it's all good, man. I'm just saying, like, I'd like a system like that where I could go and spend directly off a card. I don't have to register it with my Yeah, name. I mean, that would be badass, dude. That would be cool. I mean, imagine a way where you could just go and use your Shiba Doge tokens to buy food and shoes and yeah. whatever else. You know, that's cool. I, yeah, I, I do like that idea. I mean, that yeah. I mean, they're, they're saying all you need is an email address. That's it. So I'm thinking that will attract a lot of people to it, you know? Um, yeah, it very well could. Because I think crypto.com does something like that, but with them, you have to provide your your address, your name, everything, right? With this, if you spend under a certain amount a day, you don't have to. But if you do go over a certain amount, then they'll ask you for your address and all your personal information. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I ain't going to spend more than $2,000 a day, bro. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's hard to spend more than 
more than more than that a day like what are you gonna buy you know so is that yeah that's what i'm thinking man yeah. if i couldn't get a card that allows me to spend two thousand a day which obviously i'm not going to spend two thousand a day um and i don't have to provide my personal information it's just an email that i can just generate um man that's 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 a great incentive for me you know um yeah no it sounds pretty cool i'm not gonna lie yeah but i'm gonna i'm gonna clip out some of the videos of where he explains it how it all works and what have you know i'm gonna send it to you man just just check it out and if you do you do if you don't you don't but you know maybe maybe you'll find something and it'll probably trigger something else some other idea you know so yeah Dude, I was looking at pictures yesterday, some old pictures of, of the bull market, and I, I even posted some of them here at, uh, last night. I was looking at some of our our biggest buys that had happened, mm. and I found two of them that I had screenshotted. Hey, let me see if I can find it. I posted it in here last night. Someone just said on YouTube, love the idea. <laughs> You know what I was yeah. just talking about. Yeah, the other one was thirty ETH, I think, or ten twenty ETH. It was thirty-five ETH, yeah. So someone saying the card yeah, I'm talk. Was... Yeah, a lot of people are actually commenting on that on YouTube, man. Um someone saying that the card is completely decentralized and virtual. Oh, it's a virtual card, right? You just probably add it to your um to your Apple Pay you, or something. Yeah, yeah, you Google can add pay. You can get it as a physical card, or you can just have it at, in your phone as an Apple Pay or Google Pay. Yeah. Yeah, send that over to me. Let me check it out, bro. If any, yeah, man. Shit, if we can, if we can figure out a way to implement it without it being an issue um, for like legal stuff. Then I mean, I'm all for it. That's man. that's something cool. And yeah, I'm telling you, like I'm I'm saying that would really make people want to buy shitload of tokens because. I'd love to be able to spend mines like that, you know, the way they've set you up. Um, but yeah, a lot of people seem to be yeah, jumping you don't on have that. To it. <laughs> don't have to do nothing. <laughs> Just go and spend, enjoy. You yeah, have to. Exactly. It also to me. But also, in order to um, have that, you have to have a certain amount of tokens in the project itself. So, in order for you to get that card, you have to buy. A certain amount of tokens, for example, in Shiba Doge. So you can say you have to spend about a thousand dollars. You have to buy a thousand dollars worth of tokens, and then you're able to use this this card. You know, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. So it's like a utility in a sense, right? So yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool. But what happens when people like so so when people use that card? Does it does it spend their tokens or does it spend their ETH or their USDT or, or how does that work? Do you know? So I think, um, I mean, I, I think it spends their tokens because they have to have that amount of tokens in order to use the card. So, so. then, so, so then what happens? The, 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 the tokens get, get sold on chain and then converted. And I think they I mean, do that. Yeah. Think, yeah. I think the, okay. the, the, that project, I think they, they somehow do that. They provide the liquidity or something to the card system. I, I mean, I need to. I need to look into. It. I just went through. I just listened to it for about five minutes. I didn't get much information, but I'm gonna get you all the information now. Yeah, for so, sure, man. No, no, no worries. I'll, I'll someone, check it out. Uh, someone said it's um, apparently the physical card has to be KYC'd, but. Um, when I heard, list, uh, heard the dev, not the dev, well, the, top, the guy there, he, he said you don't have to K KYC if it's under 2k a day. So, just, just saying. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, I just posted the two screenshots that I had in my phone. Um, mm -hmm. Someone's asking how old is this one. Let me see. Are you in the chat? Should I answer it in here? Or should I type it out? This was in January of last year, January, or this year, actually, or last year, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, look at how, look at the screenshot, look how, look how low our, our Telegram users were, 3,500 users 
Mm. But that's how crazy the bear market is, dude. I mean, the bull market is. Look at this. Somebody spent one hundred thirty-three thousand dollars to buy a sextillion tokens, and then, yeah. and then seventy-nine thousand, eighty thousand dollars to buy seven hundred quint. So, wow. some pretty crazy numbers, dude. Yeah, I remember them. Man. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> So this, you know, that's that's what the bull market does, man. People people do this type of stuff. So <laughs> just those two buys alone is over two hundred thousand dollars, a quarter million dollars. It's pretty crazy. See the market cap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like market cap fifty mil at that time, and then fifty eight mil. That's that's what it is. I think ETH was at. Here, I could tell you exactly how much ETH was at. During that time, seventy nine thousand nine hundred ten divided by twenty one. But that thirty eight hundred dollars fully diluted, right? Yeah, that was fully diluted. I believe. I believe it is. Though. Don't quote me, but I think so. I think we were paying like thirteen hundred a quintillion then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Mm. True. I remember that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, man. Those were some crazy days. But I mean, look at like ETH was literally almost four thousand dollars. It was thirty eight hundred dollars at that at that exact time. So it it makes a big difference, man. When ETH is when ETH is high, a one ETH buy on the chart creates a massive green candle. But when ETH is low, you know, like those ETH buys don't really do much for the charts. So the bull markets, as much as people people think it doesn't matter what price ETH is at, it, it very much so matters because we're paired with ETH. So you know, yeah. ETH does good. We do we do good. We do good good. Alex yep. Alex has a theory, and and he was telling me about this yesterday. He he likes um, he likes Ethereum more than Bitcoin as far as like future growth value goes. Uh, he thinks he thinks one day Ethereum is going to surpass Bitcoin. Uh, and as much as I like that idea, I, I I I don't know. I mean, I I know for sure. So this is what he said. He said he said Bitcoin is like Microsoft and Ethereum is like Apple. <laughs> that's what that's what he was saying. So. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you guys think Ethereum has a chance to to pass Bitcoin at at, at some point in time? Could be possible. I think it you may be. Do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've heard it uh, multiple times that people are saying that uh, ETH is going to surpass uh, Bitcoin at one time. So yeah, yeah. He's not yeah, the because... only one who's saying that. <laughs> So so look at why look at why I think Bitcoin is like super strong is because Bitcoin doesn't have to do anything. Nothing. They don't have to do squash. That's that's it. Bitcoin is Bitcoin, it's a store of value. It's like everyone knows what it is. And they don't have to do any marketing. They don't have to do any new development. They don't have to do anything. The but that makes Bitcoin what it is. Ethereum, on the other hand, it can evolve and it could turn into something even crazier than what it is right now and better and more bullish. And um, it provides people like us and people uh, who have a creativity of wanting to get into Web3 to be able to develop stuff in on the Ethereum network. So he, mm, yeah, uh, do I actually, now that I think about it, I do think Ethereum could one day pass Bitcoin. It just, uh, everything has to align correctly because now I see why Alex is saying it reminds him of Apple is because Apple has the app store where people can make stuff and introduce introduce stuff. Ethereum is kind of like the app store because people can just create on it and and release new products on it. So yeah, and that kind of makes sense now. If Alex Alex said uh, the app store was successful, the most successful thing for Apple because it gave. Apple a opportunity to become more than what it is with you know other people coming in and other companies coming in and introducing apps and building stuff there. So yeah, actually I now now that I'm thinking about it, I do think Ethereum has a really, really good shot of becoming something huge considering like, you know, all these people and companies come in and, and keep building on it. So shit. I mean that's pretty cool to think of. Yeah. What do you think? What's going to happen with the Shanghai fork in uh, two days? Is it in two days? The what? The, the, 
The Shanghai, Shanghai Fork. Fork. Yeah. It's TD subject. Uh, it's TD. A lot of it's uh, 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 coming uh, uh, onto the uh, onto there the is. chain again. There is TD can explain so, yeah. all that. So, so I, I I I have a slightly different perspective, and I agree with you, Leo. That I think, uh, um, and Alex, I think uh, definitely Ethereum on a long run will definitely maybe doing the flipping, as they say, of Bitcoin, which is not that far off, and it may do it. But uh, I think in the short term, it has to weather some, uh, you know, uh, difficult uh, terrain. And one of them is, uh, you know, this Shanghai fork that's coming up, it'll unlock a whole bunch of, uh, what do you call, uh, um, staked uh, ETH. Yeah. Which is which is what's going to come around. So that is one aspect which is going to put some pressure on on the token. And the second one is, as of twelfth of this month, officially, uh, Ethereum is going to become proof of stake, because so far all of the upgrades that they've done is to this point, where they're created all the infrastructure and everything to migrate into proof of stake. And now, as of twelfth. It's an official thing that Ethereum has officially moved from proof of work to proof of stake. And while it's all good, we'll have all of the goodness of Ethereum, but uh, at least for the folks in US, our, uh, our treasury friend here, you know, uh, considers Ethereum as a, uh, as a security because he very clearly states every proof of stake Crypto is a security. So right. these are all short-term things, but in long term, I think however it plays out, it plays out. But long term, I think you're absolutely right. I think uh, it will definitely, you know, uh, it has all the bells and whistles, like you said. Yeah. To- See, look, I, I don't think I don't think Ethereum be, being considered a security is a bad thing. For Ethereum, uh, it would be a bad thing if if they didn't have a large enough team and enough money to support having to uh, you know pay for compliance and all of the registration fees and all that. Then I'd be concerned. But I mean, at, at one point Vitalik was one of the richest people on the planet. I mean, he still is one of the richest people on the planet, and and the Ethereum uh, Foundation has enough resources to actually take this and. Uh, you know, take it and be fully compliant, and actually, it can be a better thing for for Bitcoin, uh, for Ethereum in the future. Who knows? Um, but I'm not too I'm not too concerned about uh, the staked Ethereum unlocking, man. To be honest with you, I I, I think anything that happens, uh, even if it dips, even if it goes up, like a lot of it is just like short term stuff that people get caught up in. Um, if you're like me and you look at the long term of things, then I, I mean, I, I don't know what age group a lot of you guys are, but I'm assuming a lot of you guys are not in your late 50s or 60s, and some of you guys might be. But um, in 20 years and 10 years, if if crypto, if ETH, if Bitcoin, if, you know, if that can be a part of people's retirement funds, then so be it. You get what I'm saying? Like if you're buying ETH at 2K and 30 years later, 20 years later, you retire from having having ETH or Shiba Doge or, or Bitcoin or whatever, then all the power to you, right? But if you're if you're looking at it just short term and, and just trying to make a couple bucks, then that's a whole different game. And I used to play that game uh, and I would have still continued to play that game if I if I didn't see the amount of success that I saw in in Shiba and in Doge, right? I, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I got really, really lucky. Uh that that just happens obviously i was in the right place at the right time before things popped off but i also did get very lucky because that what happened to me and what happened to the uh, rest of my friends like that's not something that that happens to normal people on a normal basis it's just it's just not it's like astronomical you know the amount of money that that i was able to to make from just those two meme coins alone so yeah i do i do understand that luck is also involved but now the way that it, it helped me grow as a as a person looking at at things from an outside scope is like you got to look at things long term because you can't time that luck but that 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 luck that good that good thing that's going to happen to you is 
a combination of you believing in what you what you're getting yourself into and then just waiting for for that time to come so patience has always been key um i had to be patient but i didn't have to be as patient as a lot of other people um obviously as most of you guys know i'm still holding like 80 plus percent of all of my doge and shiba holdings so um I still haven't sold. I'm still I'm still a holder, uh, but I did I did take a large, large chunk. I mean that 20% uh, of of my bag was enough to enough to set me up for life in in a way, right? So yeah, man. I mean now I'm looking at things from an outside perspective, an outside point of view, and and it's like I I do personally think ETH, Bitcoin, crypto, and uh, you know, a lot, a lot of these projects that have good, good uh, foundation and structure behind them, they really can be some of the most talked about and some of the most valuable things, you know, coins, assets, NFTs, whatever, in the next 15 years. They, they really, really can be. And all it takes is one financial hiccup in, in the world economy to validate crypto even more. And then you can fall asleep one day and wake up and see, you know, overnight you see a Bitcoin is trading at like $250,000. That's 100% possible. That can happen. And when it, when, when it starts happening, we saw how it happened last time. It just happens so fast. You can't play catch up. It just, you just got to be there at the right time. I mean, that's good for Shiba Doge too, right? If, if Bitcoin and if ETH start rallying, I I think we've built a very solid community base for for people to start getting in here because you know newer newbie people are not going to look at a two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin or a ten thousand dollar Ethereum and say hey that's what I want to buy they're gonna they're gonna look at um, other things that they could buy millions of uh, quintillions of uh, sextillions of so we're very appealing to to that audience of people and that's what makes me super confident in um our growth strategy i think the way you put it leo i think it's so uh so wonderful because the point is i think uh however much you uh, do to crypto in terms of lockdown plan down the very nature that it's decentralized you know you can only lock down so much maybe within a geography area you cannot lock down around the world i think it's it's just it's just too decentralized, the entire crypto, you know, and, and with the smart contracts, the way they are designed and stuff like that. So it's, whatever they do is, uh, you know, however it comes in terms of uh, clamping down based on some rules and regulations, it will all be temporary or or it will be, it will evolve over time, I guess, right? Because they can never clamp down the whole whole infrastructure because it's just everywhere. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely, man. It's like you, you can't get rid of crypto at this point. There's no one's getting rid of crypto at this point, right? It's 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 validated itself enough. But what do you think? What are your thoughts on this Shanghai fork that's happening? Are you are you are you kind of like bearish on it bullish on it what's your opinion on it well i actually uh, maybe i took some uh, uh, data i'm pretty uh, uh bullish on the fork itself and like you said um you know uh, i don't really have to worry about the you know price discovery there uh, but you know the hindsight is pretty strange right if you don't talk about it it'll be like you know <laughs> so, but uh while it is very bullish and while it will be very, very uh, helpful uh, for future growth of uh, Ethereum right now, I think 33% of, uh, of ETH is staked deep right now. And, and that is what, you know, whether call it liquid staking or lock, uh, call it within uh, however it is. So that's a big number that plays uh, in with the bear market the way it is. With this around the corner, that you could, uh, you will, uh, all of these holders will get this stake. So, interim, if you take out nine months from today's discussion, and if you would have asked me, hey, how will it be one year from now? And I think it will be great guns. It may be like 
it may flip Bitcoin for that matter. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. see, so some people look at it and they're like, oh, look, you know, all this snake Ethereum is going to unlock and people are going to sell it. And I look at it like, no, they're probably not going to sell it because these people have been staking it for years and making money on it. What they're probably going to do, because they're already smart people, <laughs> is they're probably just going to stake it again and continue making money on it. So, you know, what they wouldn't get, they wouldn't get rid of something that's been giving them passive income. That's how I look definitely. at it. Definitely, yeah. definitely, and I think that is that is a, a that is a solid, uh, you know, uh, argument right there as well because. They, they didn't need the money right now, and they left it there for two years, right? And there may be some yeah. people who will take some profits, maybe. But yeah, you're right because all of that money can go back into getting another node, right? Another validator node, right? So yeah, it may be all there itself, and this may be a moot point. But yeah, but feature-wise, I think um, I think it's going to be very bullish. It will be very very the next. Thing that's coming up, I think it's in uh, October, the next update. That's when we will see the actual, um, you know, uh, the pricing and everything come down on the front end. There'll be a lot of front end changes right now. They're not using the Gorilla ETH right now for this test. I think they're using what is it called? Pasadian? Pasadian? Some other yeah. test net has come up now uh, for this Shanghai fork. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we, we used Gurley, we used Gurley, um for all of our testing when we were doing the the crates and just everything else we were building. We were solely using Garly, but um, one of our lead developers he said he said next time around we're not going to use Garly anymore. He said we're yeah, going to yeah. use a different one. I don't, I don't remember which it's one he said. But... I think it's called Pasadi or something. Some I sorry, I maybe totally butchering the name here. But yeah, from now on, people will be switching from Gurley to this test stat, which is what uh, uh, Shanghai Fork will be using, so. Yeah, yeah. I remember he would always complain about Gurley because because you, you actually had to keep um, running a faucet to get test ETH to keep, keep continuing to test. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> sometimes it would take forever to get it, so it's like we'd be sitting around waiting for the faucet to open, and then we had to find out like we had to find people who actually had a whole bunch of Gorily ETH and have them send it to us. And it was like too much back and forth. Hey, you should ask me. I'll send it to you next time. <laughs> now I know. Now I know. And, but I mean, I think, I think we have like over over a thousand of it now. So I don't think we have to worry about uh, Gorily ETH anymore. <laughs> Plus, we're not even going to use that test nut moving forward. But yeah, man, no, nah, man, fu uh, the future of crypto is looking looking strong. Pe look, there's too much craziness in the news going on for people to actually see all of the good things that are going on. And that's what I hate about the media is they'll talk about all of the negative stuff nonstop, but they'll never they'll never not once mention something positive. So if you really want to learn, you really have to go out of your way to kind of like do your own research because the media is not going to tell you nothing until until it's too late. So man, I appreciate I appreciate the fact that T D that you actually do so much research in the space and honestly you know more than I do as far as like, you know, what's going on with with ETH and the back end and stuff. Cause I'm so tunnel visioned into, you know, making sure that we can keep building on our end. Like sometimes I overlook a lot of this stuff, right? I, I know what the Shanghai fork is. I know like you know the basics of it, but I haven't dove dove deep into it like you know some of you guys do. And you know it, I, I really, really need to get back on 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 pace with uh, what's going on in in um, you know these markets. So I think hey, Leo, I think we'll be able to do that. Let me put what's it up? this way. Let me put it yeah. this way. The last upgrade when it happened about triple happening. You, yeah. you know how I learned it? How? From Leo. <laughs> <laughs> but that... after that, but after that. I am up to speed on every single day, every single thing on, <laughs> on Ethereum. So. That, yeah, 
Yeah, man. Dude, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happens, and <laughs> I'm glad you learned that from me. I mean, <laughs> yeah, dude, some some things I'm good at, some things I'll look into, and then some things I'll, like, I'll skim over it, and it won't catch my interest, but, but then it turns out that it's something that I should have looked into. So, you know, that's that's the that's the game we play. He's been sending me articles to forward to you. If you look in your DM, I sent you an article. A sushi swap. Yeah, that just seven. came out two weeks. That just came out two weeks back. I think you made a reference to sushi swap, and that's why yeah. I sent it to you. Maybe you were already aware of that, but yeah, I'm actually gonna look into sushi swap because um, I heard. I heard that they do like cross-chain functionality now, and as long as you have a liquidity pool there, people on other chains could start um, trading your tokens. So uh, I don't know exactly how it works yet, but I'm going to definitely look into that. Yeah, but he sent an article saying it's, um, if you look, it says the set is going after SushiSwap. Yeah, yeah, they are. I, I saw that too, actually. Cause that's the, one of the first things I saw when I... Like did just two minutes of research yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so far, so far, Uniswap is the safest. They have not got anything yet. Touch wood. Uh, but yeah. they have not. They're going after almost everybody. So at least in the United States. So anyway. But, yeah, but the, and the thing is, like, they just want money, man. That's all they want. They want they want a piece of the pie. They want their hands in every cookie jar, right? That's that's how they are. These. These people, they, they'll they'll never be happy unless they have taxes coming in from every single thing that makes money across the world. Yep, so, yep. I, um, yeah. Follow the money. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Deadhead says, did you know Uniswap V3 just became open source? No, that, I didn't know that. That's actually pretty cool. They probably did that so people don't start ripping off their chains like that you know they've been trying to do so it's like you want to use uniswap go ahead here's here's the code <laughs> i don't know man ai is getting crazy too i don't know if you guys have been following the development on ai but it's getting pretty pretty crazy what what have you done? yeah i, I... I mean, not that I found anything. I, I've, I've actually been like experimenting with um, just like GPT-4 and you know some other AI stuff that, that that's been coming out, and it's pretty in insane, dude. Like the voiceovers, you could sound like anybody. Yeah. You can you can write scripts. You can make shows. You can make animations. You can. It's pretty in insane, man. Like it kind of blows my mind. Yeah. Very true. Um. <laughs> Now you now you can duck yourself in another face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be funny, man. <laughs> Dox myself as Elon Musk. <laughs> yeah. hey, Everything is possible. We push it up. Overnight we'll be mooning. Overnight. <laughs> yeah. And then and then I'll be in jail two days later. <laughs> It's all right, man. Take one for the team. It's worth it. Right? Take one for the team, bro. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> uh, we'll be rich. Take we'll one for the team. We'll, we'll come and bail you out. Don't worry, man. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they'll hold me for too long. Nah. But yeah, you're right. I've seen that. Um, like, anyone can become anyone now. Literally, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's creepy, man. Yep. Yeah, they got to do something about that because that I don't think that's that should be allowed, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I but, don't think that should be allowed. I'm, I'm all for technology and I'm all for like advancement and stuff, but shit, bro. Like, but 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 uh, think of this, Leo. The whole thing here is not even tip of the iceberg, and we are talking like this. Somebody the other day asked me, "How does this uh, large language model work?" Right the chat GPT yeah. models work. So somebody thought, you know, all of that data is actually uh, somewhere from internet, it compiles everything from internet and it displays uh, to you based on the question that you ask, right? That's, so, it, I mean, it's just sourcing data from somewhere else and putting it all together. 
yeah but it's trained it's, it's trained on like trillions of different inputs you know so it's true. like it knows it knows so much so the, the the large language model the only thing it's doing is while it's forming a sentence it is trying to predict the next word that's all it does yeah but it's yeah. so good at it you know yeah. it's like it's... And, 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 and that's the point <laughs> it's somebody saying it's actually because if you ask the same question three times in chat gpt it will either stop telling you anymore. In fact, it will give you a, I just answered. It will tell you like that. Or it will get, start giving you something completely that you would not understand anymore. Because the first time around, it gave you the right answer as per its training. But if you ask the yeah. same question again and again and again, it gets completely vexed up because it doesn't know what, or it will just tell you, hey, you have to change your question. Because, yeah. What what really what really in, intrigues me is not like hey let me ask ChatGPT a question like just basic question like you know uh, how hot do you need to get water to get it boiling like you know like basic questions like that that's not what intrigues me what intrigues me is when I get really really um, creative with the prompts that I use and I'll like tell it to pretend to be like George Clooney and you know like uh answer a, some a question the way that George Clooney would for example you know and just really experiment deep into the the way that you could prompt with it and then interact with it and not most people do that right uh, well a lot of people probably do but uh, I don't know I mean I've been I've been trying to like you push it to its limits, and every single time it ceases to impress me. Man. Like it, it, so, so, so what you just did, Leo, is called prompt engineering. We thought you know yeah. that you did that. People in future will be specialists in prompt engineering. That will be a job uh, role itself. How to right. talk to AI. It's called yeah. prompt engineering. Yeah, because if you like, if if you want to write like a formal email, for example, the better and more creative you are with your prompt in there, the better response you're gonna get out of it, the better outcome you're gonna get. And I've I've tested that so many times. Like, um, you know, I've gave it I've gave it context with a very simple prompt. I've gave it con context with the intermediate prompt. I've gave it context with like a expert prompt with a lot of instruction, and the more instruction and specifics I give it, the the crazier the output is. So, yeah, you're right, man. That that is going to be a job in the future, 100%. And I can I I can see that being a very high paying job for people um, because you're going to be able to get the most out of those those language models just just by knowing how to interact with them. And if you could you could build pre built prompts and kind of like have that. Um, be be a core business for you and be able to sell that to people who are utilizing ai i mean shit, dude i think you can make a lot of money yep yep and remember when we did the shiva's cookbook here you know people used to ask questions if you ask a very generic question you would get a very generic response the more specific you get give me this give me a diet plan give me low sugar high carb this that whatever however you do it would tune itself right mm -hmm. to give you that specific answer and that's the next big thing how do you ask and leave if you just say hey i'm a five-year experienced person i want an svp resume written it will give you something but then if you prompt it differently say hey i am a supply chain specialist over 20 years uh, what are the top strategies it will give you some yeah. top strategies then you would say yeah, hey, give me the top top 10 points here uh, for each one of the strategies. And once it lays all that down, then you say, hey, I'm a 15-year professional. I would like to apply for a position of SVP. Now compile me a resume based on the data about and if yeah, because then it uses process of elimination. Yeah, it'll do yeah. process of elimination to know like that, you know, this guy already knows X, Y, and Z, so I don't need to include yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's crazy, bro. It's gonna it's gonna get even more crazier. I mean, like you said, this is just the tip of the iceberg, and it's still something that's been out for less than twelve months, you know. So, like, I can only imagine how much smarter and stronger it'll get over the next couple of years. But shit, man, I, I honestly like I don't know. I still don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> I still don't know. I, I I like it because I'm a tech guy and I like you know tech, but. 
I, I just, I still can't figure out if it's going to be a good thing or a bad thing for, for society. We regulate they're it. also, they're already, they're already making music with the AI. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, they're making music. I have a friend who's a sound engineer and, and I actually uh, spent like a couple hours at his house a, a few weeks ago and, and we were, um, he was showing me how he's using AI to help him make music. It was pretty crazy. And he was making some really nice music with it. it was, I was blown away. Yeah, you can just put in what you want for music and then AI will make a song and done. <laughs> it's just yep. crazy. And Leo, not long before, in 2017, uh, Google realized that we don't have enough AI professionals. So they released their uh, you know, core libraries like TensorFlow and uh, other companies uh, released CUDA and others. And this was in November. And at that time, when AI was just in its infancy, getting released out to people, and people were learning, they used to think, you know, all the repetitive tasks will get automated, like they called it robotic process automation, RPAs, and stuff like that. Five years downstream, we came to 2022nd November, exactly five years later, the most thing that is in trouble right now is the creativity. Because what ChatGPT told us is, all the creative things, which we used to think would be, you know, the last things AI will address. Well, sorry to say, that's the first thing it addressed, like songwriting, poems, you know, articles, blogging, writing books, anything creative. It took a shot at it first, writing code, right? The creativity, yeah. it went after creativity first. Yeah, it's because that's what people that's what people uh, honestly use it for most, right? I mean, I could I could see a, a, a avenue for content creators and like YouTubers and stuff that just you know spend hours and hours per day trying to come up with ideas, just literally go and use AI to give them those ideas and and just start making scripts and YouTube videos out of it. It just makes their job so much easier. But then it kind of like makes it so that their ideas are not original and it makes people not use their brain anymore. So, I mean, that's, that's my, like, that's my take on it. So uh, yeah, creativity is the number one thing that's going to get impacted by, by the, you know, the introduction of AI. All right, guys. Hey, I got to, I got to wrap this up. I got to get going. I, I got those people coming over here probably in the next 15 minutes. So I'm going to go get, prepare for that. Um, I'll still be around here in the chats. Like as always, if you need me, just tag me. Uh, this was a cool conversation, man. I, I really enjoyed this today. So thank you guys all for joining us. Thank you guys all for tuning in. We'll be back here on Monday for another AMA. <clears throat> and we'll see you guys then. So as always, if you miss Doge, that sucks. If you miss Triba, that also sucks. If you miss Triba Doge, then you could go ask ChatGPT what that means, and it'll probably <laughs> tell you that you suck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. We should ask nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh... Yeah, guys. All right, guys. Yeah, I love you guys. I'll talk to you guys soon. If you guys want to chat or whatever in 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 the text channels, just tag me and and I'll catch up with you guys there. But till then, hope you guys have a good weekend. Hope you guys stay safe, stay successful, stay positive, and we'll talk to y'all. Peace. Love peace. peace. Life's